Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I wanted to show you how to create those dreamlike glowing photos using something called the Orton effect. This effect was originally created by Michael Orton to create watercolor like dreamlike photos, and it was originally done by sandwiching together two or more pieces of slide transparency film, one of which was overexposed and out of focus. We can simulate this effect using digital photography and photo editing and we're going to look at three ways of doing that in this video. One thing to bear in mind with the Orton effect is that it's easy to overdo or overuse. So you want to try and create very subtle versions of it. It's usually quite good in landscape photos or woodland photos, but you don't want to overdo it so it's blatantly obvious or quite frankly the image just looks a bit fuzzy or soft. You could of course purposely overdo the effect if you're trying to create more abstract style photos, but if you're trying to represent a scene as it is and you just want to add that subtle glowing dreamlike effect, then the Orton effect can be a good choice. But once again, you wouldn't want to use it on every photo. There's loads of different ways to implement the Orton effect digitally. And in this video, I'm going to show you three ways to get started that are quite simple to do. And in a future video, I'll do a more advanced video with more advanced techniques. So let's head into Lightroom and we'll look at some before and after images. And then we'll go and actually recreate the Orton effect for each of these images. Let's start off by looking at some before and after images with and without the Orton effect applied. I'm just going to hit L on the keyboard a couple of times to remove that background. And on the left here, this is a shot of Mauritius without the Orton effect applied. And I've just made some basic edits in Lightroom, such as the contrast and the color, and to bring out the detail in the sky a little bit more. In the middle here, we can see the same edit, but with the Orton effect applied. And I've used Photoshop to apply the Orton effect in these images, but you can could use other image editing programs to create this effect. So in all of these examples, I've exaggerated the Orton effect just so you can see them in the tutorial video, especially once it's uploaded to YouTube with compression. And if you look at this right hand image, there's a slightly stronger implementation of the Orton effect. We're going to be recreating this effect in just a minute with these images. If I scroll down to this middle set of images, this is a common sight in England in springtime. We have these bluebell woods, which are very nice. On the left here, once again, is just a basic Lightroom edit. And the second version here is with the Orton effect applied. And you can see the kind of glowing ethereal effect. And the Orton effect is often used in woodlands to recreate that kind of misty or dreamlike look. The third image that we're going to be looking at in this tutorial video is this image shot in Kakadu National Park in Australia. Once again on the left is the original image with Lightroom edits and on the right hand side is the image with the Orton effect applied. Once again you can see a subtle glowing effect. I'm just going to hit L again to bring back the user interface and I'm going to come over here and go to this collection of original images. So let's start off by applying the Orton effect to this image of Mauritius. In this video, I'm going to show you three different ways to simulate the Orton effect. We'll start off with the most simple and basic version. So what we're going to do is right click on this image and we're going to go edit in and choose edit in Adobe Photoshop. Just click that and Photoshop will open and we'll have this image as a layer in Photoshop. Okay, so that's our image loaded in Photoshop and we can see the layer down here. The first thing we're going to do is duplicate this layer. So I'm going to right click down here and choose duplicate layer. I'm just going to click OK. You could give this a name such as Orton layer, but I'm not going to bother in this video. I'm just going to click OK. So now we've got this background copy. Make sure this background copy is selected. And the first thing we do is we want to apply a blur. So I'm going to come up to the filter menu here and choose blur and choose Gaussian or Gaussian blur, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Just click that. So we get to choose a radius when we're applying the Gaussian blur. You can experiment with this radius for different images, but a good rule of thumb as a starting point is to choose the number of pixels in the radius here equal to the number of megapixels in the image or the camera if it was shot without a crop. So for example, this image was taken with a 6D Mark II, which is a 26 megapixel camera. So I'll just move this. It doesn't have to be perfect. We'll just say 26.3. 
and we'll click OK to apply that blur to the image. The next thing we want to do, once again making sure that this duplicate layer is selected, is to increase the brightness of the image. So essentially simulating overexposure. What we're going to do is come up to the image menu here and choose adjustments and you can use either levels or curves to do this. I'm just going to use levels as it's a bit quicker. And what we want to do is we want to crush the highlights. We don't want to completely make the image white like this but we want to blow out the highlights a bit just to create the image that we want. So once again, you'll need to experiment depending on the image you're editing and we'll also bring the blacks in a bit here and click OK. So now we've got an overexposed blurry image, we want to actually blend it in to the original background image. Once again, make sure the background copy is selected and then come up to the opacity box here and pull it all the way down to zero. If you do this, we'll get back to the original image. If I put it up to say 50% here, notice how the effect becomes progressively more strong and unless you're intentionally wanting to create an overly abstract style image on purpose, you'll want to use an opacity far less than 50%. Also notice on these distant mountains, if I just zoom a little bit here, we can see that the mountain peaks here are also glowing. They've got this kind of dark halo. We don't really want to apply this glowing effect to shadows because shadows are darker and shadows don't normally glow. We want to try and limit the effect to the lighter tones and highlights. One way to do this is to choose a different mode here for blending. There's three that I suggest you try out. The first is lighten, but notice here we've still got a bit of haloing. The second is screen, which can help to remove the halos around the shadows. And the third is overlay. Once again, this can help to remove some of the haloing around the dark areas, and it produces a much more intense, higher contrast image. So for this example, let's choose screen. And I'm just going to hit Control zero to zoom back out. And now that we've chosen our blending mode that we think suits the scene that we're editing, we can bring down the opacity to create a more subtle version of the image. What I suggest you do is actually set the opacity back down to zero and then go away from the computer monitor for a little bit just to let your eyes readjust away from the autonized version and then come back and then do the edit. So you normally probably don't want to go much more than 15%. Probably that's the absolute maximum, but once again, this is to taste. You just don't want to overdo it. In this tutorial, I'm going to actually overdo it a little bit, just so we can see the effect in action. So I'm going to deliberately choose a way overdone autumn effect here, just so we can see it properly. But once again, you probably want to stick with anywhere between one to 15% in actual images. So once you're happy with the image, just go up to the file menu and click save. This will sync it back up to Lightroom and now we can close Photoshop and go back to Lightroom and we can see the autonized version here. Once again, I'm just going to hit L a couple of times. So this was the original version and this is the version with the autumn effect applied. So there's a couple of disadvantages with this first approach. The first of which is we can't make use of camera raw in Photoshop to tweak things once we've applied the autumn effect. And the second is we can't adjust the amount of blur and the amount of overexposure once we've applied it to the layer. If we want to change things and tweak them, we'll have to undo the blur and undo the contrast or the levels adjustment and then see what the effect looks like. So this is quite inefficient. In the second example I'm going to show you next, we're going to be making use of smart objects to solve these two problems. So once again, we're going to start with our starting image in Lightroom. In this example, I'm going to use this image of the Bluebell Wood shot in England. Once again, I'm going to right click, go to the edit menu here, but this time, rather than choosing edit in Adobe Photoshop, I'm gonna choose open as smart object in Photoshop. So we'll just click this. Once again, this is going to open Photoshop and add the image as a layer. The difference in this case is that the layer is going to be a smart object, which is going to give us some different options. For example, if I double click on this layer, it's going to open up Adobe Camera Raw, and then we can make some more adjustments from the raw image. I'm not going to do this at the minute, so I'm just going to choose cancel. Just as before, the first thing we need to do is right click and duplicate this layer. This is going to create a duplicate smart object layer. And once again, making sure this duplicate layer is selected, we're going to come up to filter and we're going to choose blur 
and choose Gaussian Blur. This image was actually shot quite a few years ago with a 5D Mark I, which is about a 12 megapixel camera. So we'll use the rule of thumb and choose 12 pixels here. Once again, this doesn't have to be perfect. Click OK to apply the blur, but look down here, it's actually applied this blur as a smart filter, so we can go and modify it later on. We also want to overexpose this layer. So what I'm going to do is come up to the image menu here, go to adjustments and choose levels as before. And once again, really squash those highlights and also bring in the blacks a little bit. Just choose okay. And once again down here, this levels adjustment has been applied as a smart filter. Once again, I suggest you start off by changing the opacity here to about 50%, just so you can start to get an idea of which screen mode will be useful. And notice how in woodland scenes, already this is creating a beautiful kind of dreamlike ethereal scene to this woodland image. Because we're using smart filters here, we can go and tweak, for example, the levels by double clicking on it. I'll just move this out of the way. Notice I've got the preview box ticked here and we can go and fine tune the amount of overexposure in the layer that we duplicated without having to undo all the changes and reapply them. So that's one of the benefits here of using smart objects. I'm just going to cancel this because I kind of liked the look as it was. The other advantage is because we're using smart objects here, once again I can double click on the thumbnail here and we can make some changes in camera raw. So for example, I could reduce the exposure here and click OK, and this will darken the entire image. I don't actually want that, so I'm going to hit Ctrl Z. It's just an example of the extra flexibility that this approach provides. Once again, if you're doing this on your own images, I suggest you bring the opacity all the way down to zero and go away and leave the computer for a little while. Come back, select the duplicate layer, and then modify the opacity, once again, without overdoing things too much. You'll probably also want to experiment with the different blending modes. Once again, these blending modes that you should start with are the lighten mode, the screen mode, and the overlay mode. I think for this image, I'm going to play with the lighten mode, even though we might get some fringing around the shadows. Now we can adjust the opacity to taste. I'm going to go a little bit more than I ordinarily would, once again, so we can see the changes in this tutorial. Now we're happy, we can click save and close Photoshop and head back to Lightroom. And if I just arrange these here, we can see on the left here, this is the starting raw image with just some basic Lightroom adjustments applied. And on the right hand side here is the Autumn effect applied. The third and final example in this tutorial video is to use selective application of the Autumn effect in an image. So for example, you may not want the full Autumn effect applied to strong foreground elements in the image. So once again, we'll start in Lightroom here. And in this version, I'm going to edit this Kakadu scene from Australia. Once again, I'm going to right click Go up to the edit in menu. I'm going to use smart objects for this example, but you can also apply this technique if you're using standard layers. So once again, choose open as smart object in Photoshop. We'll duplicate this smart layer or smart object. Just choose duplicate. And once again, we'll apply the Gaussian blur. This image was once again shot with a 5D Mark I quite a long time ago. So I'm going to choose a radius of 12.5 and we'll also come up to image adjustments and we'll squash the highlights and just bring up the blacks a bit. Once again, grab the opacity, take that to 50%. And for the blending mode, once again, Lighten will probably create some halos around this cliff face, so we probably don't want that in this image. We'll probably want to choose between screen and overlay. In this image, I think I'm gonna choose screen, so just click that. And notice how the cliff face and the kind of mid-ground here has the Autumn effect applied, and it looks quite nice, even though we need to drop the opacity a bit but we might not want the Autumn effect applied to these strong foreground elements. So we can selectively remove the Autumn effect from these bushes and foreground elements. To do this, what I'm going to do is come down to this button here and choose Add Layer Mask. Just click that. We'll come over here and we'll make sure that we've got black selected as the foreground color. And we'll come up to the Paintbrush tool here and select that. And you can just use the left and right brackets to increase and decrease the size. So we'll choose a nice big brush. And at the top here, I've got the opacity set to 100%. So now we can just go and paint out the foreground here. And this will reveal the underlying layer, which doesn't have the Autumn effect applied. 
So I'm just doing this really quickly. Obviously you wanna spend a bit more time in your own images. And we can see in the layer mask down here that we've painted on this black area, which is going to allow the original image to come through. If we come back to the opacity here, and I'll just whack this up to 100, and notice as I decrease the slider, it's changing the autumn effect for the mid-ground and the sky, but it's not having any effect on the foreground here. And for argument's sake, perhaps we didn't want to apply the autumn effect to the sky. Once again, with black selected and the layer mask selected, we can just paint out the sky here. I'm just doing this super quickly. So once again, this is an artistic endeavor, so each image will be different and it depends on what look you're going for. So once again, the opacity is still set to 48, 50% here. We can reduce this to zero, go away and make a cup of tea or a coffee in my case, and come back and just increase the opacity until we get a look that we're happy with. Once again, I'm going to overdo it quite a lot for this tutorial video, just so we can see the changes. And just one final thing before we save this image and go back to Lightroom, notice that because we've painted out the autumn effect on the foreground, that these bushes or the foreground might look a little bit dark. Because we're using smart objects here, I can double click on this bottom layer, open up Camera Raw, and then for example, we can come up here and choose a radial filter and add a new radio filter. But notice I've already got this radial filter that I applied in Lightroom. And here we can do whatever adjustments we want to bring this up. So I'm not gonna to spend too much time on this, but you get the general idea. We'll just bring maybe the shadows up. Anyway, just click OK to apply those changes. And notice that this bush in the foreground has been lightened up a bit. We can come up to the file menu, choose Save, and close Photoshop to go back to Lightroom. Now on the left here we've got the autonized version and on the right we've got the original image. I'm just going to hit E to go to loop view and F to go to full screen view. So once again this is the autumn image and if I just flip over to the original image you can see the original image here without the autumn effect applied and once again back to the autumn image. So that's three different ways to use the autumn effect in Lightroom and Photoshop. One thing to bear in mind is that once you've applied the autumn effect, you might need to go and bring up the shadows or otherwise tweak the contrast of the image just to make sure you've got the contrast range that you're looking for. And you can do this in Photoshop before you save the image or once it's back in Lightroom, you can make a few final adjustments. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, I'd love for you to subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell to be notified of future tutorials. Also feel free to like the video and leave me a comment in the description. If you like or you hate the autumn effect, or if you want to showcase some of your work with the autumn effect applied. See ya.